Hey everybody, welcome back to Nuvi News channel and today we look into a feature that is 4 years old, quite underrated and helps you structuring a couple components better. Here we go! Ideally, components are decoupled from each other, but of course in some scenarios you want to compose a single feature like a dialogue or a form out of components that have some relation to each other. And commonly when you say, I don't know, you have a form, then you start with a form input or a dialogue root, dialogue model, dialogue model, title, header, bean factory, you know where this is going. Long, long component names. And it is not necessarily straightforward that these components necessarily belong together or have to be used together just because of the naming. And with the feature we have a look in today, we can make that more explicit. It just looks a bit, let's say, unusual because it's barely used. Let's take a look at our demo application. Our demo application is as minimal as possible, as you know it, and we've already set a few things up. We have a form component here, besides our app component, it's just a placeholder, right? You have a form with a slot, put some things in. In theory, you have like validation, error, event handling, and so on and so on here. Commonly, you have error and event handling, as well as validations and other functionality in here. And then we have our form input.view component, which only has a defined model to pass the message prop on and deals with a custom view model that is then just passed to the input component. Also here there would be other functionalities, other features. This is just a little placeholder. And then in app.view we use the whole thing and say okay we imported from form.view, we name it app form because well there is the good rule that components should be multi-word so they don't clash with other HTML names like form or input. Um, so we don't name it form but app form in this case or base form or deform or whatever you want to, but keep it multi-word. And then also we have app form input. This is not because of multi-word. We could have just left it at form input, but just for consistency to say this form input should be used in the app form. That's what I mean with then it starts to get like a bit lengthy. Then of course we also have the message here to say, okay, we have a value passed it on. We pushed it in via the model. We also render it. So this all works as expected. Now, the only thing is that as said before, okay, the naming suggests they have to be used together, but it's not really explicit. And you might not notice unless you check which components are available, and especially in bigger applications that might be tricky. But what if I tell you there's another way, as mentioned in the intro, that we can make that a bit more explicit that these components belong to the same namespace, so to say. And to do this, we create a new file. We can create it and name it form.ts or js if you don't use JavaScript. And what we do now is we basically import our form from dot slash form.view here. And we do the same with our form input. So we take the form input from form input. And now we actually don't want to import them and do something here, but actually want to straight away re-export them. So instead of doing import, we do export and instead of this, we just say default form, default as a form and form input. Now, one more thing. Now we don't necessarily need the prefix anymore because this is all in the, let's say, form namespace. So we can just leave it like that. Export default as form and input. We could even say, okay, we just export the default here. That would also work. But let's keep it like this for now. And the next step would be going to app.view and actually using that. And how do we do this? Well, now we can say, okay, sure, now we can import form and input from uh, .form.ts, but we didn't really win anything there. So this is not necessarily ideal. Now we have the same problem as before. If we would remove the whole prefix here and the form there, things would work as before, right? But this doesn't make things more clear, especially not when reading the template. Of course, the script part, it's a bit more clear that they belong together, but in the template part, not really. So is that it? No, of course not. Let's use namespaced components. And all we have to do is to do an import star as app form, for example, or whatever you wanna call the whole thing. So we import all the components in form.ts and basically put them into one big thing. Now, of course, the error message is that there is no form, no input, that's right. But what we do now is we can write app form and also down here, app form. Now, still, it doesn't do anything. Things break because there's nothing as we don't have a default export. But if we write a dot now, we have app form dot form. We'll do the same here. And also the same with app form dot input. And here again, things work. 
But now the benefit is that you actually have clear encapsulation and also coupling by saying, okay, they all belong to the same app form, let's say category, or to the same logical and architectural structure. And maybe you've seen that pattern before in other frameworks, but even in Vue, it is quite a thing. As mentioned before, this is a four-year-old feature that's been around for a while, but it's not used that often, at least not what I've seen. But with libraries like Reka UI, aka Radix UI before, you've seen that they offer a namespaced version of, for example, Dialog to make sure that you can compose things a bit easier. So instead of importing the Dialog root, trigger, portal, overlay content manually, you just take Dialog and then do this. It's important to mention that, yeah, this is one namespaced version, so you don't need to do it, but it's nicer for composing. Just as a comparison, if you go to the dialog here and take a look at the actual code example down there, you see all these imports and then step by step, we have all of them here, which is not ideal. As mentioned before, I think the namespaced version is a bit more clear. Another use case that's out there is motion. Motion.dev, aka motion for view nowadays, right? Has a view version. Also on that note, make sure to listen to the Deja Vu episode where we talked with Matt Perry, the creator of motion dev formerly known as Framer Motion, and why they went all the way uh, to a framework agnostic animation library and um, why it's out there now, and also all the insights around how Motion for View happened. And what Motion for View offers is a motion component, and then they simply use the namespaced versions to indicate, is it a div, a button, so just to make it semantic. So for them, that's a super interesting use case. I haven't seen much anywhere else, but it's also really clever to say, okay, we have that one motion component, and it should be in all cases, have all the support for like well focus and animation and other props. But of course, you still want to have that accessibility and making sure that the HTML is semantic. Funnily, you don't have to use it. So if you just check for a motion component itself, then you can also just use motion and then set the as tag that's more common, like motion as button whatsoever. That's also working. But of course, this is a nice way to expose the whole thing. And you can also create custom motion components from uh, your actual component, which is also a very interesting case, but that's for another video. Nevertheless, worth checking out. And if you like the pattern, that might be worth applying. But here is the interesting part. When should you actually use namespaced components, you might wonder, because as mentioned before, okay, this is a pattern and especially for couple components, this sounds logical. So if you have some kind of design system, if you have components that are definitely used together in one way or another and only like that, then that's a good choice. So as mentioned for design systems, if you have like, I don't know, a grid system and want to set some rows, some columns, some guides, whatever works in your system, that's a good way. If you have components that are not that tightly coupled together, then it's not necessary to use that. And of course, then once again, if you use auto imports, you might not have as big of a pain with the huge import lines. On the other hand, the argument to say that namespace components are more explicitly named and it's clear to which category or structure they belong to, well, that still stands. So now I wonder, have you heard of namespace components before? And if yes or no, have you used them? Are you keen to on using them? Any other examples that come to your mind? Drop all the info below in the comments as usual. And yeah, let me know. I'll go through all of them. And on that note, I hope you have a wonderful week. See you all soon in the other ways around the channel, Deja View on our lovely podcast, uh, or in the next one. Happy hacking.